In this video, I'm showing you how easily you can make my healthier white chicken chili with added vegetables, including zucchini and corn. It also gets a creamy protein boost from cottage cheese. I also blend down the onions and simmer all the beans to minimize heartburn and promote gentle digestion. My recipe provides the perfect flavorful base that you can easily add more spice to. This comes in really handy if you're serving guests with a variety of spice tolerances like my family. We're gonna start by prepping our ingredients and we're gonna start with three cups of chicken stock. Now I prefer to mix my own using some better than bouillon instead of having to store lots of cartons or cans of chicken stock. I'm gonna start with three cups of warm water and then I'll add about three teaspoons of chicken bouillon. And then we can set this aside. Next, we wanna dice four cloves of garlic. So I've started by peeling my cloves and then I'm just gonna go through and do a really rough chop on them. Eventually, we'll be blending these in our upright blender so they don't have to be minced. One of my secret ingredients to making this chili a little bit healthier is adding zucchini. It has a very mild flavor and it's going to be blended in so you won't even know it's there. So we're gonna start by cutting off our ends and then we want to slice them into fairly narrow pieces so that they can cook through quickly. I love the flavor of onions, but I find that sometimes their texture can be a little bit difficult to digest. So I found it's much easier if they can be cooked really soft and then blended smooth. So we'll chop one onion in half, in half again, peel off the outer layer, and then just give them a simple rough chop. And then we can set this tray aside right before my eyes are about to start watering. <laughs> Next, we're gonna prep all of our beans, and I have two cans of white beans, plus one can of corn, and one can of pinto beans. And I really like adding the pinto beans just to give it a little bit of variety of flavor. Now, it's very important to rinse all these canned beans off really well before you use them, because that liquid can have a lot of starch to it, and also can be a little bit upsetting to digestion. So I'm gonna dump all these into my colander, and then I'll take this over to my sink and rinse these really well. Next, we want to prep our chicken breasts, and what I have here is equivalent to two medium to large size breasts. So I have one chicken breast, and then I have four chicken tenders. So I'm gonna show you how you can use both. And to help this chicken cook evenly, we want to have them roughly the same size. So I'm gonna take my chicken breast, and I'm just gonna make some cuts through the thicker part just to kind of butterfly it open, and that's gonna help it cook at roughly the same speed as the chicken tenders. But it is convenient to keep it all together in one piece. And to help enhance the flavor, I'm gonna sprinkle both sides generously with some coarse sea salt and a few dashes of pepper. And then we'll do the same to the other side. And then we can set this aside. I'm gonna show you how to cook this chili in a cast iron Dutch oven. But in the recipe card, I also give instructions for how to cook it in a crock pot, as well as an instant pot. We're gonna begin by heating our pot to medium high heat. So I'll begin by dropping in a fourth a cup of butter. And I'll just stir that around to let it start melting. And then we're going to add in our chopped onions, as well as our zucchini and our garlic. And then we'll give those a quick stir so they can be well combined. Oops, one tried to get away. Now we just wanna cook this down until our zucchini and onions are nice and soft so that we can blend them together. So I'm gonna go ahead and put on my lid and then come back and check it after about two minutes to just give it a stir. And it will probably need about five to seven minutes till they're completely soft. So about every minute or two, I'm just gonna come back in and give it a good stir. And then put the lid back on and let that continue to cook. It's been about five minutes and we can see now that our onions and our zucchinis are nice and soft. And we can check that by stabbing them with a fork, which goes in very easily. So now we'll turn off the heat and then we want to very carefully transfer them into our blender. So I'm just gonna use a large spoon and scoop them right out. Mm, that smells so good. We're gonna to wanna to add some liquid to our blender to help blend down the zucchini and the onions. So we're gonna add a little bit of our chicken stock, but before we do that, we want to add our seasonings to it. So I'm gonna start with two teaspoons of cumin, one teaspoon of paprika, half a teaspoon of oregano, one teaspoon of salt, and about an eighth a teaspoon of black pepper. And I'll mix those together with a fork. And then we can pour about one cup of this into our blender. And then I'll just blend this on medium in my Vitamix until it's nice and smooth. Well, that looks perfect. So now we get all the flavor and the nutritional value of the zucchini and the onions, but they've been blended down to promote the easiest digestion. Well, now we're gonna cook our chicken. So I'm just gonna add about two tablespoons of some light olive oil to the bottom of our pan. And then we'll get that nice and warm over a medium high heat. Now to get the most flavor out of our chicken, we want to brown it on both sides first. 
So I'm going to go ahead and just lay it right down into our hot oil. And then we're just going to let this cook for about four minutes before flipping it over to the other side. So after three minutes, I'm going to go ahead and check the chicken. Ooh, and I can see it's already starting to brown. So we can go ahead and flip these over. And then it smells good in here. And then I'll let them start to brown on this side and then check them after about three minutes. So it's been about three minutes. And so now we can go ahead and check the underneath side of our chicken. And it is nice and brown as well. So now we can add in the rest of our ingredients, which includes the rest of our chicken stock. Make sure we get all that flavor down in our chili. And then we can pour in our zucchini and onion and garlic mixture. And we can add in all of our beans and corn that have just been hanging out all this time. And then to add a little bit of spice and flavor, I'm gonna go ahead and add in about a tablespoon of these very mild diced green chilies. Now I don't have a very high spice tolerance, but this is gonna add some really good flavor. But of course you could add the whole can if you prefer. And then we're just gonna give these a quick stir. Now I'm gonna turn up my heat so that I can bring this to a nice low boil. So I'm gonna go ahead and put on my lid to help speed that up. And then once I hear that it's starting to boil, I'll go ahead and turn the heat down to about a medium and then just let it simmer for about 25 to 30 minutes. And that's going to cook down the chicken and it's gonna soften those beans even more. And it's really gonna fuse all of those flavors together. It's been 30 minutes that my chili has been simmering and that looks amazing. And I wish you could smell my kitchen right now. Next, we want to fish out our pieces of chicken. I'm just gonna put them onto this pan here that I washed from earlier. Carefully slide this out of the way. And now we're gonna shred our chicken with these two very sophisticated tools, <laughs> just, just two forks. So we're just gonna go in and pull it apart. You can see how it has this delicious color on the outside, but then it's nice and soft and tender on the inside. Well, now our chicken is all shredded. We'll do a quick quality control taste test. That is tasty. <laughs> I'm gonna set this aside for just a minute. To add some delicious creaminess to our chili, as well as a protein boost, we're going to add some cottage cheese, but we want to blend it down so it no longer has its curdled texture. So back in our blender, we're gonna add one cup of cottage cheese. And you can use large curd, small curd, non-fat, low fat, whatever your preference. And then to help it blend down a little bit easier, I'm just gonna go ahead and fish out some of our liquid in our soup. I'll try not to get too much corn. <laughs> and then just add that to our blender. And then we'll just add our lid and blend this until smooth. And now we can just pour it back into our chili. Now I wanna turn my heat back on to about medium high. I want to get it nice and warm so I can simmer it just a little bit longer. Now to add some really fresh and delicious flavor, I'm gonna go ahead and squeeze in the juice of two limes. And my little lime juicer makes this super easy. It also makes these really fun little lime hockey pucks. <laughs> and your hands smell really good. So now I'm gonna stir this all together. And then we can carefully add in our shredded chicken. Now, if you're pressed for time, you could serve this right away, but I like to let it simmer for another 10 minutes just to allow that shredded chicken to really soak in all of that flavor. So I've just turned my heat to a medium high and then I'll put my lid back on and I'll let that go for 10 minutes. So my pot has been simmering for 10 minutes. Oh, and you can see what a difference that makes. Now all of the shredded chicken has really soaked in all of those flavors and you can tell that the cottage cheese is well incorporated and it has that delicious fresh scent of the lime juice. Now the best part is you can get very creative with how you serve your chili. I'll just ladle some out into my bowl. Oh my goodness, that looks so good. I love that little bit of darker color coming in from the pinto beans and then getting just that golden corn. That is so pretty or aesthetic as my teenagers would say. My favorite way to garnish the top of my soup is with some avocado. So I'm just gonna make some very thin slices here and I'll just scoop out a few wedges and place those right on top. Then of course we need to add some cheese and some white cheddar is my favorite. And I'll sprinkle on just a few chopped green onions, which also adds some beautiful color. And then finish it off with a few cilantro leaves. Now that's what I'm talking about. And I'll get a nice bite with avocado and some cheese and some chicken, and some of the beans. And then I'll blow on it so it's not too hot. Mm. That tastes incredible. Wow. There are so many incredible flavors in this chili, I don't even know where to start. 
It's hard to pick out one dominant flavor because they all blend together so well. I love the soft texture of the chicken and then the beans and then getting a little bit of crunch that comes in from the corn. And it has the perfect amount of seasoning to it where I get some of those classic white chili flavors but they're not too spicy or too strong. For someone like me, this is perfect, but my husband would definitely want to add a little more spice to it, which works out great because I can just set some aside for him and he can spice it up to his heart's content. This is one of those heartwarming dishes that is worth a little extra effort to prepare. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with me today in my kitchen, and I've included a link to the full recipe and it's in the video description below, which leads you to my website, gentletummy.com. And I also invite you to like and subscribe to my channel. And if you know someone else who would enjoy this incredible chili, please share this video with them. And I cannot wait to have you hang out with me again in my kitchen.